Hello again, everyone. I'm Charles Gross. And I'm Leslie Hoban Blake. Welcome to Two on the Eye. Let's talk about the revival of Take Me Out. Now, this play opened on Broadway. I think it was close to 20 years ago. It won the Tony. It won the Drama Desk. I didn't think it deserved either. And now it is back. But let me address the part that I'm sure you're all interested in. If you are going to see a bunch of buff actors, male actors, I should say, taking a shower in the nude, well, you definitely will be getting your money's worth. However, I do think there is more to the play than that. There are some flaws. Just, just because it's about baseball and the baseball season just started, you think that's what it's about? <laughs> Do I think that's what it's about? No, but I think that is what you mentioned this play and that's the first thing that, that comes up. And, and that's why I couldn't wait to go see it again. But <laughs> let's face it, Richard, Richard Greenberg was a, was a family friend. He was, he, he was my father's neighbor. Mm -hmm. And Richard Greenberg discovered baseball in his, in his 30s. My father discovered baseball in his 80s. I mean, he knew about it when he was a kid, but then he went to work and he never looked back. He never was a baseball fan. So the two of them had baseball to talk about, among other things. And and the character of the uh, the repressed accountant in this story is very based on Richard. If you know and love Jesse Taylor Ferguson from Modern Family, you will not be disappointed because essentially that's the Jesse Taylor Ferguson you are getting. I will, I will say, however... You, he does not take a shower new. No, but he is also not full on modern family. He's buttoned down. He's held in. I mean, it would be stupid if you only go to see it and you see modern family. That doesn't mean anything. Actually, his character is one of the problems that I have with this play. All right. He's a fanboy. He discovers baseball. He goes on and on and on about baseball. And yes, I can understand you're discovering the game. It's exciting. But this guy is a professional money manager. And he's getting, you know, his client is one of the top earners in baseball. I would expect a more professional attitude. Uh, when, well, when we should with back up a little bit and tell the story of the play. Uh, there's, there's this very famous baseball player, Darren, Darren Lemming, it's an odd name. And Darren Lemming comes out at the top of the show as, as described by his friend, Kippy, uh, who's also one of the base players, and he tells the world at large that he's gay. And mm -hmm. then he goes and finds this money manager to try to manage the money he has because he's thinking of leaving baseball. And, well, and thinking of leaving one, baseball only because of the reaction that he gets. I mean, this is a very nonchalant. He just decides. He doesn't tell his friends. He doesn't tell anybody uh, on the team. He just comes out and does it. And you know, even 20 years ago, my feeling was, well, it's not really a big deal. But in fact, in sports, it was because no one at that time. Excuse had come out. me, in sports, it still is. Nobody still has. Who has come out in the last 20 years? And what is the reaction? Well, is, you know, there is some blowback from his teammates. But again, this is one of the things that bothered me about the structure of this play. You have a baseball team that won the World Series, one of the top teams, the top. And there should be a certain... Anytime you're play, yeah. Yes. You know, yes. And it's not there. These people, there really isn't the type of interaction that you would expect a major league team that has won two or three World Series to have, or in any office situation where people have worked together and they've accomplished so much. Darren has a Darren has an I'm me the hell with the rest of you attitude. He really doesn't. He's not a friendly guy. He's not a, a, a he doesn't snap towels at people. He's not you know playing the locker room game. He comes in, he does his job, and he he goes on his way. But and you know what? That that's pretty much how the other players no, do. The two Hispanic guys hang out together. Right, the and and Darren Japanese and Darren guy has nobody. And Darren hangs out with Kippy, but they don't come together as a team. Then let's 
dive into a little more of what happens in the play. The team starts losing. They bring in a new guy. He's promoted from the, uh, from the minor leagues. He's a brilliant pitcher. They start winning again. Turns out this guy is both a major bigot and a moron. He goes on TV and he uses... And a every- homophobe. He's a bigot, a moron, and a homophobe. And he uses every politically incorrect term that you can think of now. It seems to me that an organization this big, don't they have PR people? And then later on in the play, he throws a pitch that kills an opposing player. You know, it's presumably an accident. Who happens to be black? Who happens to be black? But he is take, he is arrested. He is questioned by the police. The team doesn't send an attorney to help him. Who is running the back office of this baseball team? George Good Costanza? Question, but, it's a, but it's a play. It, you know, Charlie, but, but it, it, it's, a sort play, of- it's a play that hits too many false notes. And then one other, one up for me, and then one other scene in the play where uh, Darren and uh, this bigoted player whose uh, name is Shane, they are, it's one of the two shower scenes. They're showering together. And all of a sudden, Darren just comes and kisses him on the lips. Now, that's a pretty serious Me Too offense. It was the done po- to prove a point. It wasn't done because he wanted him or anything. It was done to prove a point. Yes. But I'm saying in this day and age, it's not acceptable. I don't agree. I totally disagree. I think it's very well thought out. I think it holds up very well. I think it holds up as well now as it did then, irrespective of whatever you think the different mores are, they're the same. The role of, of Darren Lemon being played by Jesse Williams. Most people know Jesse Williams from Grey's Anatomy. I do not because I don't watch Grey's Anatomy, but that's where he's known from. I think that Jesse Williams plays it down almost too much. He lays him back so far, he's almost falling on the floor. There is not much emotion in, in his performance. But I will Wait. say that the guy playing Shane Mungit, the guy playing the bigot, Michael Oberholzer, I think that that role is, uh, becomes the focal point of the show because of that, because of the, the, the awful things that he says and the terrible thoughts that he has. So that's it. That's my, that's my two cents. Well, sure. That is the dramatic part of the show. You know, uh, D- Darren, the baseball player, getting kind of getting knocked off his pedestal is a part of the show, but it seems to happen to be a little too fast. And as you say, the character is very unemotional. No, I, the actor was unemotional. I don't think the character is unemotional at all. It's a question of the way lines are delivered. Uh, he just doesn't seem to have very much personality off the off the baseball field. He just he, he just happens to be a great baseball player. And and I mean, I'm thinking of somebody like A Rod, who definitely has a, a personality. You know, I mean, he well, maybe, had a personality. Maybe get him to play it in in uh, late later in the run. <laughs> Your conclusion. Oh, I liked it a lot. You know, I liked it a lot. I, I would give it a, I would give it a 4.75. Well, not I, did, a I did not like it quite as much. I felt there were just too many flaws uh, structurally and, and in the dramatic presentation. So I'm going to give it 2.75. And that is our review for this evening. When you go to the theater and look for Leslie and me, us too. On the aisle. <laughs>